Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to keep up to date with our latest videos. What is going on? We are driving a 1973 Plymouth Cuda. Wow, wow, what a trip. This car came out exactly 20 years before I was born. Uh, and I know the, the muscle car market and the collector car market of these cars has kind of tapered off a little bit from what it was like 10, 15 years ago. Um, but that being said, they will always be respected cars among pretty much all car enthusiasts because this is like a period in time that was very specific to a specific country in the world. Like American muscle cars are American muscle cars. They were only built in one country for like a 20 year period of time and then the 80s rolled around and everything went to shit. Super sad, but at the same time it kind of capped off the market there's a very limited number of all these cars, Cuda, Nova, Chevelle, Camaros, Mustangs, all that kind of stuff. The pony cars, so to speak, of the 60s and 70s are very limited. So these cars still fetch a very high dollar, um, especially if you try to get like a numbers matching one. Uh, you're looking at a lot of money. In fact, the most expensive Cuda sold at auction, I believe it was a either a 70 or 71 Cuda Hemi convertible sold for something like $3.5 million. That being said, this one is a 360, so it's got a 360 cubic inch uh, V8 under the hood. Uh, it's been bored out. It's got 391 gears in the back as a final drive. It does turn like 3,000 RPM uh, on the highway going about 100 kilometers an hour. But that being said, it helps with acceleration, which is what you want. So we're in second right now. It's got plenty of torque. It's got about 330 horsepower, 375 foot-pound of torque. And it all comes down to the fact that that torque number is in fact higher than the horsepower number. So that's what you feel, you feel the torque. Down into second. So it's got this Hurst pistol grip shifter. Uh, it looks really cool, it's all machined and everything. Um, but it doesn't have any letters or numbers on it, right? So I'm basically doing this by feel. Uh, the owner of this car, Trent, showed me how to use it. Then once you get used to it, it's basic enough. So you got first, you've got second, um, and then you've got um, basically a lockout to third, which would be drive. So you want to kind of play around in second. So like 3,000 RPM, you get a massive roar from that carbureted V8, the glorious sound of history under the hood uh, and uh, that being said I think this view out of the hood is the best view out of any hood I've ever looked out of hands down hands down this car does have collectors plates on it here in BC uh, and it's very much close to stock uh, the owner Trent pays about $190 per year to insure this vehicle which is pretty ridiculous Hi, my name is Trent, and this is my 1973 Plymouth Barracuda. 
This car uh, was originally purchased by my uncle in 1973 uh, in New Westminster and it lived its life there. Um, I remember seeing it as I was a kid, always in the carport. In about 2001, he started to have health complications and the car came into possession of my father. Um, so it was originally a 318 car with a 904 transmission, 274 gears, open diff, uh, metallic dark forest green with a white vinyl top. My dad uh, in 2002 repainted it, did the bodywork, and left it as it is. It was kind of cool for my dad because he actually got his driver's license in this car. So it certainly meant a lot to him, especially when my uncle passed away. Uh, he got to see the car when it was restored, which I knew meant a lot to him. Fast forward to 2009, uh, my dad came into a position where he could buy a 71 GTX with the numbers matching 440 and decided to sell the CUDA to help fund that project. I, of course, having grown up with CUDAs in my life, uh, this one and my dad previously had a yellow one with a 340, I decided to buy this one. And within a year of owning it, I uh, took a Sawzall and an engine hoist and ended up ripping a 360 and a 727 out of a motorhome in an alleyway in Burnaby. <laughs> and I threw that in, in about 2009, 2010 there. And uh, that wasn't quite enough. So I started modifying it a bit more. I put, uh, and the engine has been bored out 60 thou, nine to one compression pistons. Uh, the heads are stock with uh, the original valves. Uh, I've got comp cams, XE 262 camshaft with springs, push rods, adjustable roller rockers, and Edelbrock four barrel intake aluminum to shave some weight off because the factory intake manifold is like an anchor. That thing is like 50 pounds easily. The car has 39,000 miles on it. Uh, when my uncle owned it, he basically drove it, drove it from his house to the, uh, the Elks or the Eagles there and then drove back home. That's all, that's the only journey it ever made. Uh, when my dad owned it, he barely drove it at all. Uh, only when it was meticulously sunny, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, and for myself, I never was able to get it past air care in BC. So that was a pain, I had to wait. And then I just ran into engine issues. So I haven't been able to enjoy it since 2018. Uh, the transmission, I've put a stage two B&M shift kit in it. At the rear end, I've put 391 gears in the sure grip with the eight and three quarter rear end it already has. It's more than enough to give it some oomph. It was repainted dark forest green metallic, just like it came from, from the factory. Uh, so it looks like it did. The only thing I've done in addition to the car is I've changed the white top to a black vinyl top. I've added an AAR spoiler on it. I've put the hockey stick stripe and hood pins in the hood. Other than that, it's fairly original. There we go, chirp, chirp the tires, 4,000 RPM, in the third, <laughs> 70 miles an hour and uh, we're having a lot of fun. This is fun. The steering, okay, you guys look at that. Nothing, absolutely nothing until you get into it. Uh, the power steering has been removed on this car, which you would think in a heavy vehicle like this, it would be a very bad thing to have power steering removed. Actually, it's not that bad. It's pretty great once you're going. Uh, it's not too bad at all. Down in a second. Everything works though, that's the thing. You know, you've only got lap belts, Shoulder belts were not really a thing. They're definitely not mandatory back in 73. Immediately though, you just feel like a badass. You, like I, I feel like I'm driving a piece of history. A, a thing that should almost be in a museum at this point. The best part about this car, one of the best parts about this car and its history is this car has been in Trent's family since it was brand new. Brand new, which is pretty remarkable if you ask me. And that's what makes a lot of these cars so cool is the passion that was there when they, they saw this car from the factory new um, and saw, saw him driving on the road and was like, I had to have one. You, 
you have to have one, right? And that's what a lot of the pony car era was, was the biggest, the baddest, the most powerful, the loudest, the most ridiculous looking thing. And the Cuda is one of those cars. I mean, this car looks insane. Ridiculous. I love this color as well. So throughout its years, from 1964 to 1974, the Plymouth Barracuda came with a bunch of engines. Uh, the base models came with uh, slant six engines, which you don't want. Obviously, you want a Cuda with a big V8. Uh, and there were a few actual, there was the 340 cubic inch, uh, 360, 383, and then there were the Hemi engines. Those are the ones that can fetch six figures and above. If you find a, num if you find a numbers matching Hemi Cuda, you're looking at a shit ton of money to get into one of those. But if you want the experience, or if you want like half the experience of a Hemi Cuda, look no further than this car. I mean, it, to me, the muscle car experience, the true muscle car experience of this is just, it's so big, it's so floaty and heavy, and there's so much body roll, uh, but it, it just needs the V8. That's all you really need. piston brakes up front they're doing their job disc brakes up front actually which is nice and then drums in the rear so this car does weigh a lot it's somewhere between 33 and 3400 pounds uh, with this engine maybe a little bit maybe closer to 3300 pounds um, and these cars traditionally you think of muscle cars you think of wow they're just boats they're way too heavy to even get their own body weight around right what do modern cars weigh you guys way more than 3,300 pounds, okay? You're looking at a new a new Challenger is heavier than 3,300 pounds, okay? You're constantly having to move the wheel. I don't know if you guys are noticing this, but like I was showing you, there's so much play that you gotta actually get into the steering. because we're running from the cops right now or something. That's what it makes me feel like. No confidence in the steering. Uh, no confidence in the brakes. No confidence in visibility. Shoulder checking's a pain. Uh, the only confidence I have is in the power of this V8. That's literally the only thing. And I'm very confident that this looks sexy as hell rolling down the road. That's all there is to it. I'm definitely not a Mopar guy. Uh, I'm actually an import guy. I have a 89 GTR uh, single turbo build that I'm currently building. It's actually my wife's vehicle. She'd be mad if I took credit for that. But uh, I've grew up with imports in my life. Uh, I've had RB240s, I've had turbo Hondas. Uh, this is just something like a family heirloom really that has sentimental value that I've built up to try and keep true to what a muscle car should be. I get a certain level of satisfaction when old timers come up and give you the thumbs up for the car because you know that it brings a certain level of nostalgia back to them. Uh, and, and that's what I'm, I enjoy it as. I don't particularly want to resto mod it. I just like leaving it as it is and giving people something to look at it, what it used to be like in 73. Uh, compared to a lot of other vehicles I've owned, this thing is an absolute dream to work on. I've been able to pull the heads off with the engine inside. Uh, I've been able to pull the engine in and out quite easily without damaging anything. There's a lot of work that has gone into this car and that probably will continue to go into the car as I drive it. Um, but it's very simple to work on, very easy, no electronics, no real ECU, it's just fuel, air, and you're good to go. All right, we'll go from like first here. There we go, woo! <laughs> 
And then you just float over the bumps. Oh, that is awesome. I love the original look, though. I love the original look. Trent, you got to keep this original look. The hood, the interior, the wheels, it's all stock and original. And having not really known much about the Cuda before this shoot, to be honest, other than Hemi Cudas are ridiculously expensive, now to actually drive one, I, I find the appeal. I get the appeal. God, the sound is lovely. I would not even be angry if this woke me up at 3 in the morning. I would not even be angry. Oh, it sounds so good. At idle, too. The idle of these cars, you cannot be. This was actually based on the same platform, uh, I think it was the Chrysler E-Body, that the Challenger, the Dodge Challenger was on, okay? The Dodge Challenger's a little bit longer, but in terms of dimensions, this is essentially the same platform as the Challenger. Uh, so, in terms of size, that's kind of why you get the big, big nose versus the Nova, which is a little bit shorter uh, and smaller, a little bit more manageable on the street. But that's part of the fun. The part of the fun of this car is just how ridiculous it is to maneuver around and like the reverse lockout to get into reverse and like one, two, three. It's like this is a whole new thing for me. If it doesn't have a clutch and five gears, I'm usually I'm pretty lost to be honest. Yeah, you definitely want to keep it in second though. Kind of above 3,000 RPM, you got big torque, big power. I mean, it's fast. I feel like going, ejecto cedo, cuz. Ejecto cedo. Another thing I love, you guys might think this is hilarious, but this is like a, this is a 5.9 liter V8, okay? It is hilarious that from the factory, this made less than 300 horsepower from a 5.9 liter. That is, I love that about early American cars. I absolutely love that. All right, you guys, we're gonna wrap it up here in a second. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It's not very often that I get to drive something of this era and of this caliber of car um, and this beautiful, beautiful of a car. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you appreciate this. Yes, it's different than the R8 and the Civic Type R we filmed recently, but I love this just the same. Definitely check out Trent on Instagram. You can follow this car. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit us up on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with what we're shooting on a daily basis, as well on Facebook and everything like that. And uh, we will see you guys very soon with some more unique cars. We'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, mid-October, and then we'll be back down in LA sometime this winter. So if you're in those places, or if you're up here in Vancouver, Canada, hit me up if you have something uh, I can drive and we can feature on the channel. But until then, see you guys next time.